Mrs. is a title used to address a married woman. Wilson has never traveled by plane before. When she arrived at the airport, she felt very confused because she didn't know where to go. The elderly woman looked around and chose to go with a group of people who were rushing to get on their airplane. She thought that they already knew how to handle this type of situation. For a woman who grew up in a small town in the state, going through the check-in process at the airport felt amazing. And almost like a fairy tale. The old woman put the key to her home in her shoe to keep it safe and not lose it. But she didn't realize that the metal detectors in the door frame would respond to it. Mrs. Doe has many responsibilities. She always finds time to help others. Wilson dressed up nicely for the trip. But her appearance made other people try to stay away from her. They thought she looked like someone who didn't have much money. That is the reason the woman at the checkout counter was very surprised to see that the old lady had a ticket for business class. At the same time, Mrs. Wilson almost didn't catch her plane because she was going in the wrong direction, following people who were flying to a different part of the country. The old woman was able to reach the area where passengers were getting on the plane, but only because a nice airport worker helped her. The man gave Mrs. Johnson Wilson gave her a patronizing smile and guided her to the gate that was shown on her boarding pass. He told her to stay there to avoid getting lost at the airport again. During that time, the old woman hesitated and played with her purse, occasionally looking at her watch. Has this been your first experience flying on an airplane? Inquired a friendly and attractive young man who seemed to possess a ticket for the business class. Yes, this is my first time. I am very concerned, Mrs. Wilson. Was very excited and his voice was shaking. That's when people started going on the plane. The flight attendant asked everyone to go through the tunnel from the airport to the plane. The flight attendant took the boarding pass from the old woman and walked with her to her seat. Wilson walked back to her seat. Turns out, the old woman sat next to a well-dressed man, who looked unhappy when he saw Mrs. Wilson is a name. He stopped reading his magazine and said, Is this the fancy seating area? Why do I have to pay more to sit next to this old person asking for money? Please rewrite the following passage in simpler language, Mr. Johnson is a highly experienced and knowledgeable professional in the field of finance. He has an extensive background in financial analysis and possesses a deep understanding of various financial instruments and markets. Throughout his career, Mr. Johnson has consistently demonstrated strong analytical skills and strategic thinking, which have allowed him to successfully navigate challenging economic environments. He is known for his ability to effectively communicate complex financial concepts to both colleagues and clients. Mr. Johnson is recognized as a trusted advisor and has contributed to the financial success of numerous individuals and organizations. In simpler terms, Mr. Johnson is a very experienced finance expert. He knows a lot about analyzing finances and understands different ways to make money. Throughout his work history, Mr. Johnson has always been good at thinking carefully and coming up with smart plans to succeed. He is also great at explaining complicated financial ideas to other people. Many people trust him to give them good advice and he has helped lots of people and companies succeed financially. Thompson, relax or take it easy. Mrs. Wilson has the same type of ticket as you. You can find it on her ticket. Look at this, said the flight attendant. Trying really hard to stay calm. I don't want to see anything. I understand now that I should have bought a cheaper ticket. The mean man spoke loudly. But he still wouldn't move his magazine from Mrs. Wilson's seat means the chair or place that belongs to Wilson. During the whole time. The sad old lady watched the argument happen with worry. Without speaking at all. 
The rest of the passengers unintentionally chose different sides. Some people felt sorry for Mrs. Wilson supported her presence in business class. While other people were openly against it. The young man who talked to the confused woman while they were waiting to get on the plane was one of the people defending her. Not wanting to tolerate the man's awful behavior. He chose to support the old lady. Oh, please. Mrs. Sanders. I beg of you. Wilson is a lot older than you. And you're acting like a mean person by making her stand while you sit comfortably. After listening to what the man said. Mr. Thompson felt very embarrassed and calmed down a little. But the anger from the business class was already very strong. And couldn't be stopped. The flight attendant didn't know what to do or how to handle the situation. So they looked at the old woman with a begging expression. Mrs. can be rewritten as, Mrs. Wilson suddenly realized. That she unknowingly became the person responsible for this scandal. She let out a sad sigh and said. Oh well, forget about it. Let's not fight. She said. I'll go to the cheaper class. And that's the end of it. She was crying and it seemed like her life didn't matter anymore. Feeling the disapproving stares from multiple people at once. Mr. Thompson chose to give in and take the magazine away from Mrs. Wilson has a chair. Please have a seat. Mrs. Wilson. You deserve to sit in this seat because you paid for it completely. The old lady was cautious as she sat down. Without being able to say anything. But the lady didn't see that her purse was open when she sat down. And a worn out picture with bent corners fell out. Mister is a short form of the word mister which is used as a title to address a man. Thompson crouched and grabbed the picture. Seeing that it showed a little boy. The man gave the photo to his old neighbor and asked if it meant a lot to them. Mrs. means a married woman or a title for a married woman. Wilson really focused on taking the picture as if it was the most important thing in the whole wide world. She smiled at it. And her face lit up. As if all her lines just suddenly disappeared. Yes, he is my child. He flies planes. He's really the one flying the plane we're currently on. Proudly said the old lady. Wiping her tears with a handkerchief. When the business class passengers heard what the woman. Who looked poor. Said, they quickly became calm and prepared to listen to her story. Dorothy Wilson said she was raised in a poor family. With four brothers and sisters. Kate and John Wilson. Who are her mom and dad had a small farm that helped them not go hungry when times were tough. Dorothy was the oldest kid. So she had to help take care of the younger ones. Peter, who was the youngest among his brothers, had difficulty with his mental abilities and needed special care and attention. When World War II broke out, Dorothy's father volunteered for the armed force, where he battled against the Japanese military within the Pacific Islands. Sometime recently taking off. John Wilson gave his girl a brilliant treasure acquired from his granddad. He inquired Dorothy to keep the family legacy secure until his return. Tragically, John Wilson came domestic in a coffin secured with the national hail. The Wilson family was crushed with despondency over the misfortune of the breadwinner and the head of the family. After the passing of her father. Dorothy's mother got to be pulled back and never met another man to spend her life with. Time went by. Dorothy was getting more seasoned. And it was time for her to think around beginning her claim family. But in step. She had to remain with her mother. Making a difference look out of her rationally challenged brother, diminish. Kate's two other children had long moved into a bigger city. Taking off their brother. Sister, an elderly mother to the kindness of destiny. It was as it were afterward in life that Dorothy Wilson met her genuine cherish. She was twenty-eight a long time ancient. And she had as of now misplaced all trust of getting hitched. Jack was nice looking. And he was a shepherd driving herds of sheep in look of places for field. 
Their relationship created so quickly that Dorothy felt like she was in a pixie story. The couple was arranging the wedding. But the awful fortune that taken after the Wilson family wouldn't permit the destitute young lady to appreciate her joy. One evening, Dorothy's rationally challenged brother Peter set their house on fire. Jack surged in to undertake and spare him. But shockingly, they both kicked the bucket within the fire. Cleared out without a home. Dorothy and her mother were constrained to live in an ancient shack. They bought it with the money they had from offering Jack's sheep. It was at that point that Dorothy found out that she was pregnant. Shockingly, by that time, her mother had as of now been appearing signs of dementia, which showed in forceful behavior. It was more than once that Kate attempted assaulting her pregnant girl with a cut, faulting all of her inconveniences on Dorothy. The terrible Dorothy gave birth to an excellent child boy. But each moment, she was anxious that her mother might inadvertently hurt the infant. Dorothy went through three a long time living in a state of interminable fear for her child's life. At that point, tired of the despondency and hardship that had come upon her in such a brief time, Dorothy chosen to send small Kevin to an halfway house. With tears in her eyes, Dorothy truly accepted that the boy would be superior off in an halfway house. Then living beneath the same roof with his grandma who seemed hurt him, after clearing out her child at the orphanage, Dorothy lived with her mother for a few more a long time until her passing. At that point, Dorothy went back to the shelter expects to require her child back domestic. But the lady was educated that Kevin had been embraced. Ever since at that point, Dorothy had been attempting to find her child for numerous a long time. But it was as it were as of late that she at last succeeded. It happened much obliged to the volunteer organization that specialized in looking for lost relatives. In this way, she bought a trade lesson ticket to be closer to her child, who was flying the plane at the minute. It fair so happened that Mrs. Wilson overseen to at last see Kevin precisely on the day of her 85th birthday. Presently I can kick the bucket in peace. I'm not sure in case I'm planning to paradise. But I'm exceptionally cheerful that my child Kevin, is doing well, said the ancient lady and cried delicately. Mrs. Wilson's story didn't take off a single traveler uninterested. A few of them indeed totally changed their viewpoint on life. The ancient lady didn't take note how. After hearing her story, the flight specialist went into the cockpit and said something to the pilot. Many minutes afterward, a declaration came over the intercom. Dear travelers, this is often your captain talking. Our flight is coming to a conclusion, but our lives do not ought to conclusion with it. Each of our lives is full of ups and downs. But that's no reason to accept that a few of us are more blessed than others. We all get openings from our birth. And our lives depend on how we utilize them. Without making mistakes. We are going not learn the delight of absolution. Subsequently, we shouldn't explore for the blameworthy when there aren't any. As we shouldn't hold a resentment against somebody. Whom we might not be able to get it. Conjointly, I'd like to tell my mother who's flying with us nowadays. That I adore her exceptionally much which I have pardoned her a long time back. She could be a great individual and merits to be regarded. After the pilot's words. The travelers gave him a standing applause cheerful to see that everything finished so well. When the plane touched down, Mrs. Wilson embraced her child for the primary time in numerous a long time. Crying with bliss. The ancient lady given Kevin the brilliant legacy. Which she kept all this time. The man carefully held the family legacy and cried like a child. Incapable to contain his feelings. He had been holding up all his life for this minute. Ethan Rogers had a tough and unhappy life starting from the moment he was born. Yes, the young man had never met his parents and grew up. In a home for children without parents. But that wasn't the most terrible thing. 
Unfortunately, Ethan was born unable to speak. And this made his parents extremely worried. His mother was the first one to do something. She hadn't heard him make any noise since he was born. His mother was very upset and overwhelmed by the process of giving birth to a baby. But his father, who is married to her, stood by her and agreed with her choice. So, they decided to take their new baby to an orphanage. That being said, Ethan didn't have any other health problems except for his difficulty with speech. By leaving their son, his parents had mostly determined that he would have a sad life as an orphan for a long time. Because Ethan couldn't speak. He had to go to a special class with other kids who had trouble talking. The boy needed to learn sign language which then became his main way of communicating. Sadly, young kids are often mean and can harm others who are slightly different. So, Ethan had to use his fists to defend himself. When he was young and he didn't have any other options. Over time, the other kids who didn't have parents got used to the boy who couldn't talk and only used gestures to communicate. He never spoke a single word. Time passed quickly in the orphanage. And Ethan, who was like many other orphans his age, was not prepared for the unfriendly adult world. Ethan was able to get a small house outside of Chicago. But it was really hard for him to find a job. A lot of employers did not want to hire a person who cannot speak. Has no parents. Has never worked before. And has no one to provide references for them. Even though Ethan kept getting turned down for jobs. He never gave up and continued to search for work. Over time, the determined young man got lucky. Thanks to the construction store owner. So, he got a job as someone who loads things. Ethan was extremely happy after getting his first job. He thought that he would now be wealthy and live a luxurious life. But he was naive. But, when he got his first paycheck. It ruined all of his happy dreams. He didn't earn much money. Just enough to buy some food and simple clothes. However, Ethan didn't allow this to affect him and continued to work hard. As he was accustomed to making the most of limited resources. Since he was very young. At this time in Ethan's life. He had not yet met someone who was very special and important to him. He fell in love for the first time when he was 30 years old. This happened by luck when he met a beautiful woman named Pamela on the street. Because of clear reasons. Ethan couldn't answer when she asked her the closest post office was. Instead, he used his hand to show which way to go. Pamela saw that Ethan had difficulty talking and began talking to him. Without him responding. Ethan was innocent and easily fooled. And he had no idea that he was standing in front of a conniving trickster who wanted to take over his house. Pamela was actually pretending to not have any knowledge about Ethan. The cunningly attractive person already knew that Ethan lived by himself. In a little house on the edge of the town. That's why she wanted to spend the night at his house. Pretending to be a harmless visitor. Ethan was a nice and trusting person. So he couldn't say no. But this decision ended up putting him in a dangerous situation. Pamela was very kind and did nice things for him in the beginning. She cooked tasty meals and made him feel excited about their future as a couple. Ethan believed he had discovered real love. Like the ones portrayed in books or movies. Sadly, the reality was much worse than what he could have ever thought. One day, Ethan returned home from work. And discovered three unfamiliar men in his house. They were using measuring tools to determine the size of the rooms and writing down information in notebooks. At that time, Pamela behaved as if she was the owner of the place, explaining the benefits of living in the area. Ethan looked at her with interest. That night, Ethan wanted to know what was happening. But Pamela stopped him and instead made him have a pleasant evening. It was the last night he spent with Pamela. The next day, some people that Pamela just met turned out to be bad people. Who scam other people with housing. 
they kicked him out onto the street. Ethan tried to defend himself. But he didn't receive the fairness he desired. But instead, he was attacked. Brought to the outside of the city. And abandoned there with no papers. It is difficult to understand how he was able to stay alive. God felt sorry for the mute orphan and decided to give him another opportunity. Since that day, Ethan has been homeless and has been staying in various inexpensive shelters. No matter how much he tried, he couldn't go to the police without his important documents. This was especially difficult because Pamela had already sold Ethan's cabin and disappeared completely. Ethan had to collect cardboard and glassware and take it to collection points to make money. Time went by, and Ethan was still living on the streets when he turned 45. The homeless man found comfort in a true friend in his dog, Buddy. Ethan decided to adopt a puppy that couldn't see. Because he discovered the puppy in a bunch of empty cardboard boxes. Unable to do anything on his own. When he heard the puppy making a familiar high-pitched sound. The man crouched down and picked up the small animal. The little dog began biting Ethan's finger. And he realized that the dog was really hungry. Even though Ethan didn't have much money. He still gave up what little he had to buy a bag of milk and a small bun. Ethan poured the tasty liquid into a cup that didn't have anything in it. And broke the bun into little pieces and put it in the cup too. The little dog ate the snack very fast. And that's when Ethan decided he wanted to keep it. Even though the man couldn't talk. He thought of the puppy as, Buddy. As time went on. Buddy became a strong and active dog. Catching the attention of people walking by on the street. Buddy could understand what Ethan wanted even if he didn't speak. All Ethan had to do to tell Buddy what to do was to look at him. So, at that place. There was a man who couldn't speak and didn't have a home. He had a dog who loved him more than anything. One day, when Ethan was walking across the street. Buddy suddenly jumped forward. Ethan was caught off guard when a fast Chevrolet car came around the corner. And quickly headed towards the intersection. He didn't have enough time to understand what was happening. Buddy was killed right away after being hit by a drunk driver. The car moved away quickly without slowing down much. Ethan heard the noise and the loud sound his pet made. Ethan's world was completely shattered at that very moment. Ethan quickly went to his dog. Not thinking about the cars coming towards him. He picked up his dog. But Buddy was already dead and his eyes were covered. That day, Ethan felt incredibly sad and upset. More than he had ever felt before. He buried Buddy outside the town where Buddy liked to look at the empty land. Ethan started feeling very sad and hopeless. And he couldn't feel better by himself. Buddy was not just a dog to him. Buddy was his only friend in the whole world. That's why. Frustrated with life. Ethan decided to write a goodbye letter. Ethan knew that he couldn't give anything to anyone. What can a homeless. Mute orphan even have to give to others. But Ethan didn't have such a limited perspective. He wrote his will by hand and then went to a notary public. Ethan didn't look appropriate when he went to public places. But he wasn't embarrassed about it. When Ethan arrived at the notary's office. He wasn't thinking about being formal. The person working at the entrance gave him a rude look but. Then acted like they didn't see him. He didn't want to be part of the situation with the homeless person. Especially because the guard had a bad relationship with the female notary worker. So he decided to hurt her in his own way. However, when the man who didn't have a home came into the office holding a paper. The woman felt scared and uncomfortable. Are you here to come see me? Jessica asked nervously. Struggling to speak each word clearly. The woman who works as a notary recently celebrated her 45th birthday. She is currently experiencing difficulties in her marriage. Which have been made even more challenging by a painful divorce process. Her husband said that Jessica couldn't have children which caused them to get a divorce. 
he did not want to get checked by a doctor. So he said Jessica could not have children and left her for someone younger. Jessica's partner was unfaithful to her. Which caused her a lot of pain. She felt like she had been left alone and unloved. When Ethan quietly gave Jessica a paper with his own handwriting. Which stated his last wishes. She was really shocked and struggled to hide her reaction. She quickly glanced at the writing. Then covered her eyes with her hands and cried quietly. In his will. Ethan explained all the details about his tough life. He talked about his time living in an orphanage when he was young. As well as how Pamela lied to him. And the sad passing of his beloved pet, Buddy. In the end. Ethan said that he wants his body to be given to science and his organs to be used to help other people. Wow, I can't even imagine how difficult this must be for you. Jessica softly spoke to her client who couldn't speak. She had a strong feeling that Ethan was being honest. Because he had tears in his eyes and looked extremely upset. Jessica held Ethan's hand and tried to make him feel less anxious. Don't stress. Mr. Smith sure Rogers is a company. Please don't die so quickly. When Miss Mitchell spoke. Ethan looked at her and silently started crying. Ethan had been on the street for a long time. He had gotten used to feeling embarrassed and treated badly. He couldn't believe that someone he didn't know would want to help him. Jessica Mitchell deserves recognition for keeping her promise. And making every effort to assist Ethan. First, she assisted Ethan in finding his missing papers and finding employment. At the same time, she gave him financial assistance. Even though she knew he was completely broke. It is difficult to say exactly what Jessica saw in Ethan's eyes. It's possible that the woman felt a sudden feeling of care and understanding. Which can happen to people when they feel alone spiritually. While assisting Ethan. Jessica didn't realize that she was falling in love with a quiet, tough, an attractive man who had gone through significant changes. Since he began living a regular life, Jessica started feeling. Ethan felt love again after a long time. At first, Jessica's friends didn't trust or believe in her silent friend. But when Ethan decided to go to college, they started to like him more. The most intense point in the couple's relationship was when they found out that Jessica was pregnant. It ended up that she wasn't really unable to have children. Jessica had a miracle happen to her that many people all over the world can only imagine. The couple found joy and had a big wedding, showing everyone that life can start at 45.